What's good, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. We're currently on the road to 1,000 subs. Uh, so if you could, please hit that subscribe button. Now, let's get back to the video. Now, my last question that, that was given to me, that was asked, um, was why is it so tough to transition from an inside player to a perimeter player? So when I say inside player to a perimeter player, I'm talking inside player, which is your guards, your centers, to perimeter player, which is your tackles. You know, people ask me all the time, like, why is it so hard? I even have some of the guys I train right now who who sometimes are, are having that hard transition right there, you know. And to be honest, you know, I had to make that transition as well. You know, I was a guy who went from high school, college, always playing tackle, right? And then get into the NFL, I have to go to guard and center, right? So now couple points that I have on that on that note in this day and age right right now with the way football is going offensive tackles are looked to be six five six six right in that range right long arms uh long long torso you know just a long body right and offensive of guards and centers are looked to be between six two six four around that range Right, you might have uh, some exceptions, which of course you know you you you'll have a few, but that right there are usually the measurements that some of these top colleges and the NFL are looking for. You know, tackles being six five, six six, centers and guards being at six two to six four range. Right, that's the ideal measurement. Now, kind of going back to kind of piggybacking off of what I just said. Most interior guys, they don't have the length to play offensive tackle, right? So sometimes it's it's not the it's not tough a tough transition because of of um, just talent. A lot of times it's because you just don't have the length. You know, I I'm a six three offensive tackle. In, in in college and it, it got away you know I got away with a lot because I had good feet now when I move on to the NFL that's not you, you're rarely going to see that right you're rarely going to see that and that's why the NFL and the top colleges they look for guys with length because you're dealing with you're 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 pretty much on the island at tackle you're on the island you have no help most of the time, and you're dealing with these speed rushes, these guys who's running 4-3, 4-4, right? You're dealing with these freaks. So, you know, it, it, it's tough for a guy who's 6'2", six, 6'3", six, that don't have the arm length as that guy that's 6'6", six, six, to play tackle at the next level, right? And to be honest, a, another reason is, you know, it's difficult to get an outside guy to transition inside. You know, so to kind of put it to put it in this point, this point of view, right? You might have a guy that's six five, six six. Right? He's six five, six six. It's hard for him to move inside because things are happening a lot quicker. Right? You you have a split second to make a decision, you have a split second to 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 decide how you want to set, right? Because inside, those defensive tackles are on you in a second. You don't have time to get into a set to kick back like you do at tackle, right? So things are happening a lot quicker, and for a tackle to move inside, it can be it can be difficult because you don't you you're you're not used to that speed. Right, you're not used to that speed, and you're dealing with shorter, you know, D tackles as well. And um, also with with moving inside, right, being that tackle, that six five guy, right, your the strike might not be strong enough. Like that guy might have a strong strike, 
Don't get me wrong. I, it's a lot of tackles in the NFL right now that has amazing strikes. But when you're but you're dealing with a 6'2", 6'3", 6'4", if it's an end that's coming in an angle and a finesse most of the time, right? He might transition to a bull and things like that, but he's most likely a finesse. Now, as to you're moving inside and you're dealing with a guy who is coming at you, who's coming at you, his, his hand is right on the ball. Like I said earlier, you have a split second and your strike has to be on point when you're on the inside. It has to be on point because you have to slow down his move, his momentum. You have to slow it down. So if your strike, your, if your strike isn't powerful enough, you're gonna just continue to get bull back. Constantly. Constantly gonna get continue to get bull back. Um another point is you might have a guy who moves inside, you know, that six five, six six guy that moves inside and a couple of things he might lack. One, he might lack leverage by him being six six, six five, six six. He might lack leverage because most of your D tackles are between six feet and six two. Most of them. Not all of them. You have some exceptions like Akeem Hicks, right? But for the most part, you're dealing with shorter guys, shorter and stout guys, right? So he might lack leverage, can't get underneath. Um, he might not be able to drop the hips. Once again, things are happening fast. So most D tackles work their move off of a bull, right? Then he might not be able to anchor and get underneath the pad, right? Pad level. That's what it comes down to. I do not think, and and, and to be honest, I think that guys that are transit, like you might have a couple guys that that are exceptions. Right, you might have guys that are exceptions like Brandon Linder, right? Brandon Linder from uh, Jacksonville Jaguar, right? Six six, plays office, uh, plays center, right? He's an exception. You're not too, you're not getting too many guys that six six playing center. I, I can promise you that, right? But he's an exception, one of the highest paid centers in the league right now. Then you might have Chris Herbert. Um, from the Cleveland Browns, who's actually about 6'3", 6'4", who plays guard and tackle, right? So they, they kind of move him around um, playing guard and tackle, right? So he's he's more of a guard-type body, but can also play tackle, right? That's an exception. Then also you might have Charles Leno Jr., who I talked about earlier from the Chicago Bears, right? 6'3", plays tackle. Why? Because his feet is impeccable it's great so this this topic right here was definitely something that i wanted to get out there because um I've, I've always gotten questions about transitioning from one position to another it's definitely tough and kind of going back to the previous question of learning all five positions are you going to play all five positions? It depends. It depends. Now, should you learn all five positions? Again, yes, you should. Yes, you should, because you don't know where the tables might fall. You don't know where, you don't know. You don't know what position you might have to play. No matter what, once again, I played taco my whole career. And I got to the NFL, had to learn how to play guard and center. Would I have wished to have learned those positions earlier, guard and center, because I never played it? Of course. It's difficult trying to transition to a new position in the NFL. It's tough. Because you're, the window of error is slim. So, High school guys, guys that might be young right now in college, learn all five positions. Learn the offensive line position. 
learn what it means to be a lineman. This right here is something that is important to me. That's one reason why I got into training. Because I want people to understand the importance of playing offensive line and defensive line. Just being a lineman, period. It is crucial. It's one of the most unique positions. It's, in my opinion, the best position in football. So take pride in what you do every single day. Appreciate you guys for listening. This is Torian Wilson with Craft and Lyman. We will see you guys next week.